We really need a result today at Mercedes. It's as simple as that. We have to start beating Red Bull and it has to start right now. Hello folks, welcome to episode 83 of this career mode with Mercedes on F1 Manager. We're gearing up for a sprint weekend in Mexico. Yes, we're going back to Mexico City. It returns to the calendar. I believe it wasn't on the schedule last season, but we are back in Checo Perez town, although he's not on the grid this year. But things are very close in the championship as we head to Mexico and like I said we have to start beating Red Bull and we have to beat them today. Max Verstappen is closing that gap like a very hungry shark hunting its prey. George Russell is doing everything he can to get this title over the line which halfway through this season looked like a done deal but it's just not panned out that way. I think I've taken my eye off the ball in terms of developing next year's car a bit too much, a bit too early. Should have pressed on a bit more with this year's car, but anyway, we're doing what we can with what we've got and hopefully it can be enough. Here's the Constructors' Championship. That's going to Red Bull. Uh, after a couple of years of Mercedes, it's returning to Milton Keynes, but we're going to make sure we have the Drivers' Championship. Oscar Piastri, he's been getting a bit of criticism in the comments section. I I totally understand, but the thing is with Oscar, the way the, the situation we find ourselves in with the budget cap being tight and parts at a premium, he's just and obviously not in the championship hunt. We're not really able to do anything with him. He's not really anywhere near as good as any of the other top five drivers. They're all 90 rated or above. I mean, Esteban Ocon is 89, Sonoda's 87. Carlos Sainz, who is 90 rated, has only got almost just over half the points of Esteban Ocon, his teammate, who's got two podiums. Mad. Um, so yeah, shout out to Esteban Ocon there. Yeah, Oscar getting a bit of criticism in the comments. Stick with him. If we, like I said, if we lose out to Ferrari and the constructors, we'll probably have to go because we can't be having that. Uh, but George Russell, it's all about him getting that world championship signed, sealed, and delivered in his pocket ready for 2027 so we're going to go make some preparations for that to be the case i'm going to go to practice and then i'll see you in qualifying for another sprint weekend well this looks a lot better doesn't it second and third in q2 and look at the lap times of the top four all on a 16 flat of some flavor we must caveat this with the fact that george russell has a grid penalty we've taken a fourth uh, engine component for him which is accounting for a lot of his speed. But Piastri's doing quite well, actually. Verstappen, only fifth. We've had rain throughout qualifying, so it's been important to get the laps in early, which is what we've been doing. And it's paid dividends so far. I'm expecting, well, I wasn't expecting Inters <laughs> to start with, but it might dry up towards the end of Q3. So let's just jump straight in and see how this is going to look. It's going to dry up towards the end of the session. So I'm just going to wait this out and we're going to go basically last drivers across the line and do one run on slicks, essentially. So I'll join you for that. All right, we are gearing up for our flying lap as we get out of the way of a zooming Charles Leclerc. He's coming through, setting purple sectors everywhere. Felipe Drogovic is currently, it's currently an Alpine front row, but I think Leclerc is about to spoil the party. Verstappen isn't going to be on a lap. He's in the pit lane. He is going to end up, I think, last of this group. So here we go with George Russell starting his only flying lap in qualifying, or qualifying three at least. Charles Leclerc is top of the times for Red Bull, but he he's now joined by Lando Norris. We're keeping an eye on our sector times. George Russell is the fastest man in the first sector. This is because the track is now at its best so far in the session. That's an Aston Martin that needs to get out of the way. It does. What's Piastri up to in the middle sector? A personal best for him. So that's decent. George Russell, only a personal best, not the fastest of anybody. Here comes Oscar then. Can he get himself onto, hopefully, the front two roads, perhaps? Oscar Piastri, 
goes third. Good job. That's a lovely place to start, but P1 would be great for George Russell. And it is! It's pole position, but it won't be pole position because of the the uh, grid penalty. Hopefully it's only five places. <laughs> so it's not, hopefully it doesn't drop him right to the back. But for Stappen, in the garage, is 10th. This is huge for our championship. Piastri will start third, thanks to Russell's penalty. But brilliant job from George Russell. We played that beautifully on the pit wall. I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one after the last couple of races where I've kind of got strategy wrong. Feels good to get a little bit of it right. It's sprint day in Mexico and of course I did just say that it won't be pole position for George Russell and it still won't be because he will take the grid drop in the Grand Prix grid but he'll start from pole position for this sprint which means he can then go and score hopefully eight points to add to his championship total by winning the sprint and we can get Oscar maybe if we can get Oscar to second in this race he'll start the race from pole position and maybe this time we could I'm getting carried away I shouldn't talk about winning a race with Oscar Piastri just yet but we're in a good position so it's mediums all the way on tires we can go aggressive with them as well and I've got an extra two sets available for the race a set of hards as well we've got two sets of softs we've got options so if there's a safety car or a red flag in this sprint we can put a set of softs on and we've got something up our sleeve for the Grand Prix too so I'm happy with the strategy let's go and do a sprint here we go then waiting for five red lights it's George versus Charles on the front row the lights are out the race is on I think the Red Bull is on softs that's an interesting call and immediately Lando Norris getting the jump on Charles Leclerc. Piastri's under some pressure from the Alpines. But George Russell, importantly, uh, I was just going to say he leads into turn one. He doesn't. Lando Norris has done the Mexico City thing and launched from third to the lead at the start on those soft tyres. And look at Dragovic in his little blue rocket ship. That is... That could be a serious problem for us at some point. Russell fighting back against Lando Norris. We really do not want to be tangled up in a collision here. That would be absolutely disastrous. Please. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm super tense. No, don't. Oh my. This is not sensible. Why? Why is this a thing? Why is this happening? I don't think the softs will last. We can keep pushing on the mediums. We've basically been side by side with Lando the entire lap. Fine, let, let him have the position. We'll de then pick up some DRS. George Russell has taken back the lead of the Mexico City sprint. Although Norris is fighting it all the way. We did get it with DRS. I was uh, fast forwarding because we were not really close enough. And then suddenly Russell was in the lead, so I had to cut back to it. We were deploying, and we've set the fastest lap even though we haven't taken the lead. Here comes George Russell once again, down the outside, on the brakes, into the first sequence of corners, and Norris just won't budge. But he does now. <laughs> there we go. Uh, George gets himself back in the lead, coming to the end of lap 10. George Russell... Just about hanging on to the lead from Lando Norris, although that might be about to change. We've been conserving fuel while... Well, we've been leading the way. Uh, there's an accident and a virtual safety car here. Jack Crawford is crashing out of the, the race, it would look like. Who's he collected? Or has he had an incident all by himself? What's that behind him? It's an Aston Martin. And that is, by the way, Max Verstappen. Oh, he's been hit by the Aston. That wasn't very good driving at all, was it? But yeah, in the background of that was Max Verstappen, who is now promoted to ninth place. But that's not any points in a sprint race. So he still has some work to do. We've got a new race leader, and it's Charles Leclerc, who's just arrived from nowhere, basically. 
to snatch the lead. Uh, Lando Norris is dropping back significantly, but everybody else is much worse for wear on their tyres. They're all approaching 50%, where after that, the tyre performance really drops off. And George will have a little bit of extra time to deal with that. We should probably deploy because Leclerc is going very fast. Oscar Piastri did fall as low as 7th. He's now back past Liam Lawson for 6th place, but that's Esteban Ocon ahead of him. This sprint's been a bit weird in that not a lot happens, then a lot happens very quickly, and I'm missing it. Although we're catching Piastri taking the position from Ocon. That's much better from him. Let's push with the engine, see if we can catch the people ahead. George Russell has retaken the advantage from Charles Leclerc. It's not offering us any replays today, so you have to catch it live, essentially. Uh, Piastri is almost within a second of Lando Norris, who was, at one point, challenging for the win. George pulling away from Leclerc at the front. Did he quite get out of a second? I don't think he did. I think George will be all right from here. However, Leclerc will now inherit a pole position. Piastri, though, on the charge. Could he maybe get past his former teammate and then maybe even catch Drogovic and secure a place on the front row? George looks like he's checked out. That's good news. That's Piastri passing Lando, is it? They're going to be. Oh, we're going to do this again, aren't we? Side by side through the S's. But this time we have the advantage. We have the tyre advantage, which means we've got extra pace. And now we can catch the other Alpine. George has just vanished. He's done an 18.3 compared to a 20 flat. Or an 18.5, in fact. Versus a 20.1. What's uh, Oscar's lap time? A 19.7. But he was having to overtake a bunch of people. Three laps to go. Let's see where... We can get Oscar come the checkered flag. Well, it didn't take long. Oscar Piastri has passed Felipe Drogovic for P3, which means he will now currently start on the front row of the grid. Maybe if we catch Leclerc, he can start pole position. At, and Verstappen is still stuck in ninth place, which means he scores no points. This could be huge for the championship because George is going to take an eight-point step towards the championship and Verstappen's going to fall further back. This sprint has gone perfectly to plan. Everybody puts softs on. They've fallen apart. And George Russell has eventually eased himself to a sprint race win. Eight points in his pocket. Fabulous stuff. He won't start from pole position, though, sadly, because he's got a grid penalty. That will go to Charles Leclerc. But Piastri did a great job in those final few laps, coming from as low down as seventh as Lawson... Pips Ocon on the line. They, they were absolutely level. We were there when it mattered, Oscar. You're right there. For once, that message is in context. But Oscar Piastri with his mega drive finishing P3. Max Verstappen. No points in the sprint. He'll start the race ninth, unless George drops behind him, in which case he will start eighth. But a lot of work for the Dutchman to do. Teammate Charles Leclerc has a big job to do for him. And if he can win the race, that helps Red Bull out a lot. But we're going to be looking to spoil that party. George Russell starts this race 18th. I am flabbergasted. We put one new power unit in and it sent us to the back of the grid. I thought it was supposed to be five places afterwards, after you've done your first one. But George is going to start this race 18th. Oh my gosh. Well, we're going to have to do it the hard way, aren't we? So, I'm going to do the strategy now. I'll probably speed it up in the edit, and then I'll talk you through my, my plans. Alright, set with our strategy. Medium, medium, soft for George. We know the mediums will last, and they'll do a good job. We can push on them. So, two-stopper for him. And it's the same, but in reverse for Oscar Piastri. We want to get him ahead of Charles Leclerc, and then maybe we'll undercut. We might even switch to the hards in the middle stint and then finish on a set of mediums. But I've underfueled both cars because I want Piastri to have extra pace and we need George to be proper racy as well. So hopefully there's maybe a, like a well-timed safety car for George or actually maybe it's just a clean race and there's it's just pick, it, pick everybody off one at a time. But we're now massively on the back foot with George. I didn't expect to be starting 18th. That's something of a surprise. 
I'm not happy about it. I am sending emails to the FIA right now. But actually they'll have to wait because we've got a motor race to do. So let's do it. The sun shines in Mexico and very shortly so will five red lights. The lights are out. The race is on. What's Oscar Piastri up to? Looking racy. That's a medium shot. Red Bull ahead of him. But Lando Norris from third place is doing what he did in the sprint. And challenging for the lead. Hopefully we can send this on the brakes and outbreak Lando into turn one. That'll do, I suppose. George is actually dropping a place. Which is far from ideal. But Piastri hangs on to P... Well, I say hangs on to P2. He's now down to P3 again. <laughs> We're going to do this whole song and dance again of side by side the entire first lap with Lando Norris. Or maybe not. Oscar, with the better traction on the soft tyres, sneaks back ahead. Tyre-wise, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Lots of softs. for snapping on softs. Some mediums as well, as George makes his first move forwards. And here comes Oscar Piastri, finally with a bit of DRS, but doesn't get the move done. Perhaps we'll get it done into the second chicane. Yeah, there we go. Oscar Piastri into the lead. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, 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 there we go. No, oi, Leclerc, stop it. <laughs> no, I don't like this. All right, come on, Oscar. You've got to muscle him out of the way. There we go. Job done. But now Leclerc will have some DRS of his own to come back at us with. So I think that's going to to and fro for quite a bit. Oscar Piastri has dropped to P3. Lando Norris has come through the soft tyres. Starting to get a bit old now. We've got a nice full battery with him, though, which is helpful because when we pit, we're going to want to use that. Although we're probably going to be pitting sooner rather than later. We're going to try and get to lap 20 with Oscar and we'll probably have to go a few extra laps on the hards I would suppose. But as long as we've got DRS I'm sure we can be absolutely fine. George Russell has got himself up to P12 and we are saving fuel. I think we're well that was a move and a half from Logan Sargent but George is not to be intimidated and makes the move for P11. Interestingly, Max Verstappen is the first man into the pit lane. He's gone for a set of mediums. Oscar Piastri, we might as well call him in uh, this lab. We've got two sets of hards. We've got two sets of mediums to use, actually. We probably don't need to be aggressive on this first set of mediums. But this now promotes George Russell to P8. And he's going a bit further into this race. So this could work out quite nicely for him. Oscar is deploying. He's on his way to the pit lane. I'm happy with how things are panning out at the moment. Verstappen in a bit of traffic. Maybe this is an opportunity for us. All fine with the pit stop for Oscar Piastri. Where is Max Verstappen? Have we beaten the Dutchman? Oh, I think we might have. Have we? We've overcut Verstappen. And just, well, actually, he was just behind us anyway. So we've held position. <laughs> um, but he's he's obviously much closer than he was before the pit stop, which. Not ideal, but we've kept him at bay for now. In comes Leclerc. Let's see what he goes to. He goes to mediums. Very interesting. In comes George. By the way, Oscar did fall behind Max Verstappen, who's pushing on on his tyres. Nice stop from the team in the pit lane for George Russell. And Max Verstappen might be about to shoot his way into the lead of this race. He's closing in on uh, Lando Norris. There's a Oh, there's a car off. That's Carlos Sainz getting out of our way. That's very helpful of him. Uh, but George Russell is losing a position here to Lance Stroll. But he's on cold tyres. And we've got some work to do in terms of overtaking. Oscar now up to P4. And just about in touch with the leaders. They're all separated by about 1.8 seconds. Just starting lap 34 with George Russell. And he's scrapping with Esteban Ocon, who's defending like a lion. And I really rather he was more of a pussycat. And, well, there we go. Oh, the, the weird cutscene. There's cars crashing. And we're missing things. We've just missed an overtake. I'm not sure who's had the accident. I'm sure it'll show us in a minute with the penalty being dished out 
as Drogovic sets the fastest lap time. That's interesting. Still not showing us who had the accident, but it doesn't matter. George Russell moves into P7 and is on the march. Oscar is now fifth. It was uh, Logan Sargent having an accident with somebody. Verstappen is scrapping away with his teammate. This is not sensible from Red Bull. They should be asking their drivers not to fight. Although, I'm asking them to fight and I'm asking them to have an accident. George Russell now up into P6 and the car ahead of him is his teammate, Oscar Piastri. So, what I'm going to ask Oscar to do is rarely defend so that it makes it nice and easy for George when he comes past and then Oscar doesn't have to lose time getting out of his teammate's way and as soon as the move is done, well then ask him not to fight his teammate and he could just sit behind him and hopefully George's pace will drag Oscar along. Is this the move between the two Mercedes? Oh, that was... Please don't, Oscar, don't fight your teammate. There we go. Just, just in the nick of time. So now George can crack on. He didn't get DRS, which was probably what we wanted there. But now he can close down Drogovic. What's his gap to the leaders? He's only 11 and a half seconds off the lead. This might not be out the question, actually, of a win if we play our cards right. George Russell is approaching DRS on the back of Felipe Drogovic, and he's just picked it up now. He's still a few laps out from his pit stop. And he's now just 8.28 seconds off the lead. He's flying as Piastri comes to the pit lane. Lap time-wise, he was almost two seconds quicker than Lando in the lead. Here's Oscar. Two and a half seconds stop time. Lovely work. And George, uh, we get him driving in clean air. We can make this overtake and we can make it look a lot more simple than we're making it look right now. <laughs> Drogovic pits and George has free air now to attack. He's six seconds off the lead. That's Leclerc who started on pole. George started 18th. Yellow flags. Who is it? Behrman running wide. Okay, Oscar Piastri, P9. We can... Recover his race from here. Score some decent points. I mean, we should have got ahead early, early doors and pulled away, but we didn't. George Russell is less than five seconds off the lead. This is insane. What a performance. This is like, he's driving at peak confidence. So when, they're, when they've got all this confidence, their stats are just absolutely insane. It's like they're on drugs or something, but they're not, obviously. Never do that. Never get behind the wheel after being drunk or taking drugs. Don't do that. Uh, but we are now, we're now two seconds off the lead. This is absolutely unbelievable. We're going to finish on a set of softs. Lando's gone to a set of softs. Interesting. Very interesting. Leclerc will be in in a few laps as well, I think. But we might be in front of him by that point. George Russell's coming to the pit lane. The gap as he goes to the pit lane is one and a half seconds. Is Leclerc in? No, we might get an undercut here on Charles Leclerc. This is going to be huge. Oscar Piastri is deploying. Oh, no, 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 no. It's so slow. Why? Of all the times. Of all the times to have a slow pit stop. Oh. The, the racing gods were not on our side there. We need to deploy. And that's just left, let, left, let Red Bull off the hook. Leclerc's just come into the pit lane as Russell forces his way past Gasly. Where is the Red Bull? There it is. Oh, have we, have we, have we? Yes! Despite the, the slow stop, the extra laps, why didn't the Red Bull pit him? They've just left him out there. We've, they've handed us a position. What's Leclerc on? He's on softs, so he'll be fast. We've got a yellow flag. Uh, Piastri's just overtaken Leclerc for good measure. Good boy, Oscar. Big fan of that. Tyres are getting a bit warm, though, with the young Aussie. George now, P4, 10 seconds off the lead. 16 laps to go. It's a tall order. But certainly a podium's in the offing here. And uh, let's get Oscar deploying to defend against Leclerc. We'll get DRS now. And we seriously could still win this race. Last 10 laps. What's Verstappen's tyres like? 
probably better than ours, but, you know, we've been here before in Mexico. We know what to do. You set it up for the final lap. So if we, as long as we stick with Verstappen for the final lap, we can position ourselves to do the damage. Oscar Piastri is having a great final stint. He's chasing Charles Leclerc. We need to get him driving in clean air, cool down the tyres. George uh, is already driving in clean air. Let's get him deploying and pushing with the engine. See if we can get him into P2. Although Lando is actually taking us along quite nicely here. So I'm going to actually harvest for a minute and build up some battery. This is about to become a three-way scrap for the win in the final few laps. Because Lando Norris is a second off of Max Verstappen. And he's got George Russell right up his gearbox. We can't quite pass the Ferrari yet, frustratingly. Although, George Russell down the outside. Can he make it stick? Please. Yes, we've got DRS. And we're into P2. This is huge. Now we just have to stick with Verstappen. We deploy. We can make sure we get the DRS and just hang with the Dutchman. Surely we can't win this race from 18th. That would just be insane. But we're second as it is. And if all remains equal, we would still have a 25-point lead at the top of the championship. But I think George might be... Why did he do that? Why did he move to the inside? He had a clear run down the outside. We could have just had the lead. But we're... Okay, we're just going to do it, do it now, are we? Are we? Are we? We might do, and if we can see it through the S's. Did we get DRS off the bank marker? We did not. That is, is that Vesti? That is Fred Vesti. <laughs> Agent Vesti, the uh, Mercedes-backed junior driver, giving his, team, his former team leader, George Russell, DRS. And we're, we're in the lead. <laughs> we are in the lead of this race. And pulling away, actually, from Verstappen. We've got some pace right now. If Verstappen's got anything left, he needs to use it now. So Verstappen hasn't used that pace. And George Russell, having started this race 18th and had a slow pit stop, is now three seconds in the lead as we start the final lap. Lando Norris might even get... Verstappen for P2 on this final lap. He's not quite in DRS range yet. He's going to have to go some to, to be there. But at the front, George Russell has pulled off an incredible drive. Yes, we've got a new, new uh, engine in the car, but we needed to take it. I didn't expect us to be 18th on the grid, and I didn't expect us to win from there. But we're going to do exactly that. Oscar Piastri has played his role and his kind of spoiler tactics against Leclerc at the start of this final stint has really helped. And George has gone on to do the business. What a result. We've had a miserable last few races at Mercedes, but we're back on form. George Russell wins the Mexico City Grand Prix, gets in, he beats Verstappen, he takes... Uh, is that six points out, out of him? Who got the fast step? Didn't see. So we have to take But it doesn't matter. We've taken a huge step. We've extended the championship lead in both races this weekend. And with two rounds to go, the pressure is very much on Verstappen to deliver now. It's very much in George's hands. We might just get away with it. Why are they showing us Red Bull? We're not Red Bull. Unless they've won the Constructors' Championship. He's hugging an invisible person. They've won the Constructors' Championship. For a heart-stopping moment, I thought the game had glitched and had, like, disqualified us or something. Why? There's a weird chair over here. I don't know if you saw it on the left of the screen. But George lifts the trophy high. The anthem is playing. I finally get to go into the editing software and put the anthems in. I do have the Australian anthem downloaded. I had to use it again, sadly. But George Russell, 
I'm very pleased for him. And he's very pleased for himself. Mercedes celebrations. Now, this is what we want to see. This is what we came to see, isn't it? We didn't want to see Red Bull celebrating today. And uh, I think they've been crowned Constructors' Champions. Uh, but looking at that gap, yes, they have. But there's your result. Max Verstappen got the fastest lap at 17.7. Wow. He had some pace. He just didn't use it when he needed to. He should have used it in the last few laps. But those two coming forward 6 and 17 places. 17 places to win the race. Bonkers. Here's the Drivers' Championship then. So... Verstappen 332 points, Russell 371, it's a 39 point lead with a 14 point swing this weekend. So George could become champion in Vegas. If things pan out correctly for him, he would need to, he could afford to lose, what is it, 13 points to Verstappen, so even if Verstappen wins, if George is fourth, I think, I'd have to go go away and work it out. I think George, if he finishes fourth, is the champion. So, first match point is in Vegas. Let's see if we can take it. And if you enjoyed that race around Mexico, make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video for me. Subscribe down below for more F1 Manager content. And join the Discord as well while you're there. And also, make sure you join my F1 man my, not my F1 manager, my F1 Fantasy League. Uh, this is coming out after the Bahrain Grand Prix, so we're already around in. But make sure you join in as well. That's your thing. I'll see you in Vegas. You're the best fans. Bye for now.